stack a piece of the pork belly onto the fish. Then you add a piece of kimchi. Add a piece of kimchi. Whoa, I can smell that. When I breathe out from my nose, I can kind of feel like ammonia. I can smell the ammonia. Good morning, everyone. It's Mark Weens with Migrationology.com in Iksan, South Korea. We just drove this morning from Jeonju, and the drive took about 45 minutes to get here. We just arrived to Meruksi Temple site, and a lot of, it's a big whole temple complex with a, an outer courtyard and various buildings, but a lot of the buildings, especially the ones that were made of wood, have since um, not survived. And also there was one main stone pagoda, and it has been um, deconstructed for research purposes, but they've rebuilt a remodel the construction of one of the stone pagodas And then I think we're gonna see some of the ruins here as well. This temple dates back to 18 BC to 660 AD This is the site of the old pagoda, but they are reconstructing it Well, there's a big Stone. I hope I can hope I can make it through here. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, successfully made it through. <laughs> but the the stash and the relics and some gems and some other objects were found at the bottom of a pagoda like this. So that's why they had to deconstruct the entire pagoda to to research. Unfortunately, a lot of the temple complex has been destroyed, so there's not a lot to see. You've got to use your imagination and look at some of the remodeled um, models of it to, to see how it once was. But when they finish the reconstruction of the old pagoda, that will be cool to see. Shine like gold We just drove into the center of Iksan and we are gonna have grilled fish for lunch. <laughs> oh yeah, as soon as I step into this restaurant I can smell the aroma of grilled fish. Oh, busy place. Um, yeah, I'll sit this side because of the light. This restaurant is called Laksi Lu and it is a restaurant that specializes in grilled fish something I love to eat. This restaurant is really packed at lunch today, so it took a little while for our fish to come out, but all of the food has just arrived. Again, there is hardly any empty space left on our table. It's just completely filled. And after grilling the fish, they serve them on maybe their cast iron or stone or earthenware. Uh, like skillets to keep them nice and hot and fresh. A couple of them are different types of mackerel. There's some Spanish mackerel, some other mackerel, some little small fish, some bigger fish, and then you can see that wonderful like blistered char from that grill. And then it's served with a sauce. This is wasabi and soybean sauce. I'm gonna stir that around, dissolve that wasabi, and this is gonna be the dipping sauce for the fish. Just break off a piece. Oh, it is it is fleshy and oily and juicy. Oh, and steam. As soon as I poked my chopsticks in there, steam just came out. I'm just gonna dip a little bit into that sauce. That fish is really flaky. It's salty and it's it's really, really good. It um, You can really taste the grill flavor and that skin. That just that blistered, roasted skin is really good. That wasabi is nice and light and refreshing. Oh, that one is outstanding. It's such a buttery consistency. Oh, you can taste all of those fish oils. I need some rice to follow. Wow. You gotta taste it with rice because the fish is kind of salty. I think the way they grill it over a hot fire 
it like seals in all those fish juices and oils and fats. This one is the biggest slab of fish of them all. Oh wow, I can see, I can see the juices coming out of it as soon as I put my chopsticks in. Oh yeah, that looks buttery and juicy. I'm just gonna eat this one with no, no seasoning. Mm -hmm. Really, really moist, really juicy, really hot, delicious. A piece of salad. Mm. Lettuce leaves, oh that's kind of tangy. And a little bit spicy, that's like a tangy spicy dressing. That was a delicious lunch. I always love grilled fish. The fish is quite salty though, so it goes really well with the rice. And it's a good thing we just had a big lunch because we are gonna go do something. I, I'm not sure if it's paintball, but it's some kind of combat warfare. We drove to a place called Gosan and we are in Wanju. We're at, it's, I think this place is called the Wanju Special Forces Camp. I really have no idea what to expect. So it's not paintball, but it's these little white plastic pellets. We're about to get dressed in helmets and vests and take to the battleground. I feel a little bit like an astronaut right now. Good to go. See ya! That was tiring, but that was a lot of fun. Two teams against each other, and we were just playing against each other, and it's a pretty cool obstacle course with old cars and boxes. I was just running nonstop. I think that was only like maybe 30 minutes, 20 or 30 minutes, but that was just all out running, energy, action the whole time. Whew, I'm sweaty. Very fun. Did you have fun? Yeah, very fun, very fun. Thank you. Looks like I was on the winning team. That was about a 30 minute drive and we just arrived at the Dedunsun mountain. This is a beautiful area, mountains all around. There are some, lots of hikers here today but we are gonna take the cable car to the top of the mountain for a great view, hopefully. These are pretty big cable cars. I think they can hold like 20 people, but what's really nice is that the, all the walls are glass, so you have a wonderful view. What I especially love right now is that the flowers are just blooming, and you can see bright patches of purple and pink within the green trees. The cable car just took about five minutes. We're at the top here now, climbing up to the top deck to get a view. horizon is a little bit hazy but the views are magnificent and these rocky rugged cliffs down below here there's a rock that looks like a giant rock that looks like it's about to fall off but it's hanging on That was a quick but really nice trip to the top of the mountain, or to the middle of the mountain. From the top of that cable car, you can do some hiking. There are some hiking trails to other peaks, but we don't have time to do hiking. We needed to get back down, and we're heading back to Chunchu because we have a special dinner coming up. We just drove 
back from the mountain back to Jeonju and tonight for dinner or this evening we are having it's it's gonna be similar to tapas or metze but we are having makgeolli which is a Korean rice wine and along with that Korean rice wine they serve just a spread of different side dishes okay. <laughs> This restaurant is called Yet Chong. All the tables behind are already reserved. There is graffiti and signatures and messages of handwriting all over the walls and pictures of many celebrities, Korean famous celebrities that have been here. And you kind of order by the set. So you get the makgeolli and then you also get lots of food that's going to come out. <laughs> Oh, I think we have a pig foot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that is a looks like a braised pig foot. There are all the little bones in it and all that gelatin fat all over it, and he is just chopping it up with a scissors and getting all of that skin and gelatinous material off. Cheers. <laughs> okay. Mm. Oh yeah, that is very crisp. It tastes like rice juice, but with a little sour tinge to it and almost a little tingling on your tongue, kind of similar to drinking a soft drink like Sprite. It's really refreshing, served really cold, and I love how they serve it in that tea kettle, Bronze, um, like brass tea kettle, and then these metal cups. Whoa, what is this one? Is that cabbage? Yeah, it is a kimchi. They oh. call me the kimchi. Stew. Wow. Yeah, stew with your pork. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, this dish looks amazing. It's like an entire half a head of Napa cabbage kimchi with sauce all over it, a piece of pork, and a piece of tofu. All the aroma coming off of that kimchi is incredible. They started off by just bringing a pig foot and they proceeded to just fill our entire table full of the most amazing looking dishes. This is incredible. All to go along with the makgeolli. I have no choice but to begin with that pig foot. Let me grab a piece. This is going to need a little bit of that sauce. There are a lot of gooey, sticky, and gelatinous textures in that bite. Let me taste that chicken soup. Oh, that is really nice. You can taste the garlic in there, and those chilies and green onions. Sitting right before me on the table is a kimchi jeon, which is a kimchi pancake. Oh, this looks wonderful. And there's some other some other vegetable in here as well. Pieces of kimchi. Oh, that's good. You've got that sour kimchi. And it's kind of a, a really fluffy, sticky pancake texture to it. Big pieces of pork with the kimchi and also some of the tofu all in one bite. Let me see if I can get everything. Oh, wow. Both the pork and the kimchi oh, and the tofu, they all just melt in your mouth. Oh, that's, that's incredible. That pork is so tender. And then that tastes like, like stewed kimchi that has just been cooked down until it's like that, that fall apart tender cabbage texture that you get when you cook cabbage for a long time. Mm. That's just solid egg. And it's kind of like a cross between fried eggs, but it's in an omelet shape. This one is mussel soup. We grab a, a mussel with a lot of leeks and chilies in here. Mm. Very good. Let me try some of those cockles. Pry this one open. Oh yeah. Mm. 
Mm. Are those tacos or are those clams? Oh, really good. They don't have any kind of a, a dirt taste to them. Like a, more like a sweet squid taste to them. They just brought out another plate of eggs. This is a quadruple egg, fried egg. I think I'll go with just for some of the egg white right now. Topped with sesame seeds. Oh, that's good. That's hot and fresh. And covered in sesame seeds. Five <laughs> octopus. Where are you from? Where are you from? China. With those um, little pieces of seaweed, that also makes it really good. That's really fresh seaweed. It's crisp and really fragrant. For this dish, he just brought it out. There was a pile of rice with a bunch of seaweed on top. And then there was a raw, I think it's a raw blue crab. And again, he just expertly sliced it up with, with scissors. And then he mixed the, right, the, the pieces of crab in with the rice and the seaweed. And then he gave me this bite, which is inside of the shell. It's like a little rice ball, everything mixed in. I'm gonna attempt to slurp this entire thing down. This is a rice ball with the, I think it's the roe and the juice of the crab. Wow. Stingray and pork and pork and kimchi and kimchi. And salt, salt, a little shrimp, shrimp, okay. And all together. Yeah, all together. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> so much food on the table that we have double decker food. We've had to stack dishes on top of each other. This one is a dish. This is fermented stingray on the left side. In the middle, I believe, is pork belly. Then there's kimchi and then there's also some kind of a shrimp, chili shrimp paste. And what you do is you take a piece of the fish, you stack it, stack a piece of the pork belly onto the fish. Then you add a piece of kimchi. Add a piece of kimchi. Whoa, I can smell that. And then a little bit of that shrimp on there. That is, that is one full bite. You can really actually smell that like ammonia aroma coming from that fermented fish, that stingray. Wow, that is a pretty intense ammonia aroma. Wow. That is a lot in one bite. The aroma of that fermented stingray smelled really, really strong. But the taste was actually not that strong. It was kind of like a, a cheesy tasting fish. But then combined with that really tender pork and then that kimchi and that, that shrimp paste, the whole bite was unbelievably good. And this place, you can barely finish one bite of the dish they bring out before they bring out another dish. Okay, I may have spoken a little too soon. When I breathe out from my nose, I can kind of feel like ammonia. I can smell the ammonia coming out from that fermented fish. That is some pretty intense fish. I think we have reached the final dish. This one is duck, and it smells like duck ham. The aroma is incredible. Slices of duck ham with onions and sesame seeds all on a hot plate. That's duck ham. Ying and I just got back to the hotel. That makgeolli meal exceeded my expectations. That was unbelievable. They just kept bringing plate after plate of food to our table. I would test sample one dish and start explaining it. And then they'd bring out another dish. And by the end of that meal, we literally had two layers, a double-decker stack of plates of food on our table. 
when you come to Jeju, a makgeolli meal dining culinary experience is something you have to try. Thank you all very much for watching. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and also leave a comment below and make sure you subscribe for lots more food and travel videos and I will see you for the next video.